Hello everybody, today we are going to have a look at the CRS305 Microtech switch. It has four 10G SFP Plus ports and one dedicated 1G copper port with which you can power the device via PoE. Here are some very nice pictures. The device is all made from metal and it is a really good build quality, I think it is, even though it is really affordable. Uh, this might be the most affordable switch with 4 times 10 g as far as I can tell. And it still has some nice LEDs over here. It has LEDs for power status and if the device is being administered currently by some user. And it has a reset switch, which you actually might need. Because, for example, when I tried to set it up first, I was really successful in locking myself out. And this device does not have a serial port or something like that. So just in case you have a failure like I did during setup a couple of times, so you might need to reset it. On the back, you can see that there are two times uh, DC ports. So you can plug in two power supplies just in case if one fails. This is also very uncommon for those small devices, I mean, it's of course a 10G, 4 times 10 g device, so it's maybe uh, operated more in, in, in Soho or businesses, but in my case, I'm using it in a home environment and I don't have two power supplies plugged in, but it is nice to have that option, to have some kind of redundancy. What's really nice of Microtech is that they publish benchmark results here on their website and they not only publish benchmark results for switching mode but also for routing mode. This is something I need to emphasize. I mean this device comes with two options as the operating system. You can either boot switch OS or you can root uh, <laughs> or you can boot router OS and I decided to go for the router OS um, version because there is so many more possibilities and so many more features. Uh, most of them I do not need and I actually do not run this as a router so you can actually run it as a as a switch even if you boot it in router OS but you have more features but it's also a little bit overwhelming when we look at the interface which we are going to do now because this is actually my very own device and I needed to upgrade it to be able to run IPv6, which I rely quite heavily on. And uh, the current version is 7.7. .7. It was delivered with, I think it was like 5 point something. Currently, we're looking at the web interface. There is actually a dedicated uh, desktop application, which I happen to like a little bit better, but it doesn't run on this most recent version of macOS. It does actually run on Linux, um, even though it is originally a Windows application. But it behaves a little bit more consistent or maybe I, I just like the interface a little bit better. I have this situation. I mean, I have my main switch, which most of people po probably have when they buy such a device. This is no core switch. This is like more like an edge switch and um, so you need an uplink port of course which most probably will be 10G <laughs> and um, I mean the device needs to be managed via a IP address and um, normally this IP address is bound to the VLAN 1, the default VLAN but of course I'm not using that for my management devices so I was facing some kind of an obstacle. How do I do that? I would like to plug it in and I don't want a dedicated uh, management port connected, but the, the uplink port should at the same time work as a management port as well. So what do we have to do in order to achieve that? So it is a little bit overwhelming, especially when you work with a router OS like I do. Let's see, so we have a bridge, even in the default settings, you have a bridge over here, but in contrast to the default settings, this is uh, on the one side uh, set to VLAN filtering. In default, it's off. 
and also in default the rapid spanning tree protocol is being used. I disabled it because I don't have use for it. I won't plug in a loop. Secondly, the VLAN filtering, don't activate it right away because this will lead to locking you out. And uh, in such case, you would have to need to reset the complete device because there is no fallback like a serial port. The first thing you would do is go to VLANs and just create all the VLANs you are going to use. And uh, you can also add some kind of a comment. Uh, you can see that all of those ports are currently tagged in the uplink port, which in my case is named SFP plus uplink Aruba. The Aruba switch is my main switch over here. Sadly, you cannot, let's see here, you can define the interfaces. I changed the naming a little bit so it is more clear what is connected actually to the port, sadly. There is no option to make some kind of comment, so you have to somehow put it into the name. But at the same time, I still want to know what port it actually is. So I suggest you do not remove the number of the port, but just add some kind of naming convention into the name. Apart from the interfaces here, the bridge is also listed. But when, when we click it, we actually we are going to go into this very section into the bridging section. So even if you are in the interface, but if you click bridges, you will hop into the bridge view. This is just a side note, not so important. Uh, the ports section actually is also not very interesting right now. What's most interesting is, w well, for once you need to define all the ports and then also say what ports uh, no, define all the VLANs and then say what ports are in which VLAN for once uh, tagged and on the other side untagged. So as you can see over here, you see that I set the bridge untagged onto this management VLAN I use. And only after that you can actually change the IP addressing to, well, in your case, I would say you first add IP addresses before you delete existing ones. And then you can, under IP addresses, you can set an IP address and assign it to the interface, to the bridge, as well as in the IPv6 section, you can do the same for your IP addresses. You can, of course, uh, use something similar, uh, something different than I do, like I assigned it statically. You could, of course, use like the DHCP root advertisement and stuff like that. Uh, and apart from that, you, of course, also need a static. I mean, you don't have to, but it uh, in most cases, it seems logic to add a default gateway like I did in this case for IPv6. And the destination address is, of course, double colon. And then my interface um ip of the gateway and as this is link local i would have to define what interface this is on because the scope of the ip address is logically link local this is a little bit different of course in ipv4 most people find it more intuitive uh let's see it's a little bit overwhelming all those menus entries especially when you have different menus open do not despair once again roots well and here it is it's a default gateway what we did we do we defined all the vlans defined what ports are tagged what ports are untagged added ip addresses added default routes and then you would have to need to configure the bridge because you need to set VLAN filtering to on. I mean, this is the most logical way to go. There are different options to handle this actually, but I prefer this one. I mean, there are some different MicroTik switches which um, do not perform very well when you set this to VLAN filtering, uh, but this device is okay with it. So on, on some other devices, it might result in a lower switching capacity but as far as I know, please correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, as far as I know, 
this won't have uh, any impact on the switching speed. Again, uh, you need to put the switch into the VLAN you would like the IP address to reside in. In my case, it's 62. But uh, this is basically it if you would like the IP address not to be in the v default VLAN. And I think it's the most common configuration actually. And this is why I wanted to show it to you because I really failed quite a lot of times when I tried to set it up in the first place. The reason why I stayed with router is, is the feature richness. I mean, I do not do MPLS. I do not, and I will not use most of the features in here. But for example, let's see here. And the interface is tab. You can see there is a VXLAN feature and I would like to give that a try. And there are so many other features that are not available in the switch os so i do not actually know when i would suggest people to use the switch os but the root os here we can see what the current price at amazon is like it might be a little bit different when you watch that video so apart from the device i am using there are some devices that come with even more ports not all of them are passively cooled so I will also put some links in my description. If you have any more questions regarding this device I'm using right here, or if you want to know something about the bigger ones, just leave a comment and I would be happy to give you an answer if I can. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.